Hello, and welcome to Public Affairs Now, our super local look at what's going on in the Maryland General Assembly and the Anne Arundel County Council. In this episode, we will kick off the 2016 General Assembly session. Our guests are Len Lazarick from MarylandReporter.com and Delegate Ted Sophocles. Thank you both for being with us today. Len, let's start with you. This is Governor Larry Hogan's second session. The first one went fairly well by all accounts in terms of the parties working together. Will we see a repeat of that this year? Well, first of all, I, I, I don't necessarily think that's too accurate. There was uh, contention at the end, and uh, uh, the governor's State of the Union, uh, not State of the Union, State of the State address, uh, which is going to take place on February 3rd this year, uh, set a tone that really irritated a lot of Democrats who were sitting on their hands. So. Uh, the budget will be uh, the budget will be contentious. Uh, there's some tax proposals that should pass pretty easily. They're fairly modest, and and half of them were Democratic proposals to begin with. So, uh, it it may be okay. It depends. It depends whether they want to fight or not. Delegate Sophocles, do you agree? How would you describe last year's session, and what do we typically see in a governor's second year in office? I think it was pretty accurate, actually. The first couple of weeks were very, very uh, non-contentious. Uh, anything went fine. We got our budgets in. There were some adjustments made to the budgets, some agreements made on those budgets that, yes, in fact, that was okay. And then at the end of it, it kind of rotated around and that disappeared. So I think it became more contentious at the end because there was a belief that what we had done was going to go forward, and it didn't. Len, can you walk us through what you think will be the top three issues this year in the General Assembly? Well, we've already mentioned uh, the budget. Uh, not mentioned very much is the fact that the governor is putting a lot more money into reserves and a surplus than is typically true. So there's there's more like seven hundred million extra that is in uh, the, the rainy day fund and uh, reserves. Uh, taxes, of course, there are any number of uh, I issues. You know, top, top three, it kind, of, it kind of depends what you're interested in. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff about policing and in incarceration, uh, uh, death with uh, dignity, which some people would call assisted suicide, may get out of committee, paid sick leave. Uh, there are any number of issues that could be uh, potentially uh, hot. And, uh, you know, some of the viewers may have their own thing that they're particularly interested in, like uh, what are we going to do about fantasy uh, football? You know, are we going to make it illegal? Uh, make it illegal. Actually, a lot, probably a lot more people are interested in fantasy football than the budget. So uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Delegate, you've been an active resident and elected official for a long time. Can you walk us through your time here in Anne Arundel County? I even heard you ran for county executive back in the nineties. Twice. Twice. I ran for county executive in ninety and ninety four. I lost to Bob Neal by a small margin, lost to, Bob, to John Gary by a small margin. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's, that was, I never intended to ever start a political career. I, I'm a pharmacist by trade. I had a little corner drugstore. But even before that, my family moved here from Baltimore. And I, was, I coached Little League football for 17 and a half years. I was a PTA president. I was a CAC president. I was on a lot of boards and things and worked in the communities. My parents were the same way when, when I was growing up. That's what they did. And they taught me to do the same thing, and that's what I did. And it, they had redistricting in 1982, and decided they asked me if I would run for county council because I was so active in the community. I said I certainly would, and I tried it. I didn't think I'd win, but I did by 69 votes, landslide. Mm. That's and, fantastic. Uh, that was my first term. Len, there's often a big story in the news that takes over the debates in Annapolis. This year we have the Freddie Gray trials going on in Baltimore. Do you think that discussions of law enforcement and use of force will be large points of discussion this year? Well, we had a, a, a whole study group on, uh, on policing that is coming forward. Uh, but uh, as uh, 
as you know, that the Court of Special Appeals has actually delayed the, the start of the, of the other trial. So they, they might well not be happening. But uh, things about policing, police body cameras, uh, all those is issues, how, uh, you know, how, a you know, complaints about police are brought up, uh, are going to be Im important stuff working uh, through the General Assembly this year. While big issues like police use of force generally dominate the headlines, there's a lot of other work to be done in the General Assembly. Delegate Sophocles, can you tell us w about your job as chairman and what you think you're going to get done this year? Yeah, my job as chairman is to uh, make our delegation work as a unit with the other delegations around the state. I know we're, we're interested in Anne Arundel County, but it's how we blend in with the rest of the delegations because they have a lot to say of what happens with your capital projects, what happens with all the things you're moving forward, your school, school construction, your law enforcement, your GOCAP uh, grants, things of that nature. So they have to have a, be equal partners. And in Anne Arundel, we're blessed, I think, in that we've always had the capability of blending with the other uh, jurisdictions. And, and taking in, it doesn't matter Democrat or Republican, we've always been inclusive. And that helps a lot when you're in it down in Indianapolis. A big issue every year is always the budget. Uh, what do we see happening this year? I heard the governor talking about the, straight, the state structural deficit. Well, he, he wants to change uh, the way mandates are, are used. About 80% of the budget is controlled uh, by laws that have been passed and, uh, and signed by other governors that set up formulas and processes for determining the kind of aid that goes uh, particularly for, for school aid. Uh, uh, the Democrats ha have said that uh, mandate relief is a code word for cutting education. The governor's proposal, which we haven't seen in specifics, uh, we haven't seen anything in specifics from the governor yet, but what we haven't seen in specifics, he has said that mandate relief would simply be that if revenues don't match projections that the mandates would be changed automatically. But how that actually works in law uh, it remains to be seen. Delegate, behind us in this chamber used to be a lot of blue dog Democrats, ones that were fiscally conservative but socially liberal. Would you say that you're one of the few of those left? Uh, I guess under that definition, I would probably be one of the few of those left. But uh, I think that uh, what we have found out, that there's uh, a lot of uh, purple Republicans, too. And when it comes to the environment and some of the other issues, it's just not the blue dog Democrats. Uh, we've always, as a that code, if you, we had about 12, I think in the under that title, we currently have about three or four. Some retired. Some chose not to come back, and they took other jobs. So, uh, you know, they... And some of those seats have turned Republican. No question. And, that, well, it was several, they were up to 52 now or something like that. So uh, I think the feeling out there has become a more conservative to moderate electorate than it was a liberal uh, in this area. Anyway, I can't speak to the other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can speak to here in Anne Arundel County, and I think it reflects it in the election. Len, how do you think that affects the dynamic of Annapolis today? Uh, well, as Ted mentioned, there, there are now 50 uh, Republicans in the House of Delegates, the largest number of Republicans that have existed at, at any time in Maryland history. Uh, 14 uh, Republicans in the Senate. Uh, the, the thing that's really changed, ne neither of those are, are substantial enough to have a, a real strong impact on policy, although within most committees, really, whether you're Republican or Democrat, doesn't doesn't mean very much at all. Uh, there are lots of committees, uh, uh, particularly in the House, where Democrats and Republicans work on a lot of issues that are not these top tier issues and get along fine. Uh, the the key difference. Uh, this year and last year is we have a Republican governor, which, uh, which Democratic leadership has 
a difficult time adjusting to. I think possibly in Anne Arundel County, given that it's been a swing county for some time, Republicans, Democrats and Republicans are used to getting along mm -hmm. together. Yes, Would you are. say that? Yeah, that's a key issue uh, with us. I mean, we, we never really d differentiated. We, we did it as a unit. We always accepted everybody under our tent. They've always accepted everyone in their tent. So we don't, when we vote and we look at something, we don't say that's a Republican issue or this is a Democratic issue. Uh, so we've been fortunate from that, from that perspective. And I look forward to working again, putting my hand across the aisle to the governor and to anyone who wants to come in and with us. And I'll go with them, but it's got to be for the betterment of the, of the voters in the state of Maryland. Of course. Changing topics a little bit, a lot of construction relies on state bill money, specifically from bond bills. Delegate Sofkis, can you tell us about a couple of the bills that you know are coming up this year? I wish I could. I really don't know other than what I've read in the press. <laughs> be honest with you, and, and it's difficult to even discuss the budget because I don't know where the money's coming from, where how's it going to be spent. I know we had allocated funds for different projects and construction and transportation, and they were taken out of the budget and moved aside last year, even though they were entrenched somewhere. You know, we, we said this was mandated, not mandated, it was designed for this, and that's gone. So, And we I haven't really seen haven't the, the county legislative package yeah, not either. not at all. Yeah. Nothing yet. Uh, in... in in other counties, they, they do a lot of things in the fall, but because this, uh, you know, Annapolis is the county seat, the state capital, yeah. uh, the process, they don't really Spring. see the bills until uh, then. I think, uh, you know, uh, the coming weeks we'll see the county executive's legislative package and other things. I have uh, heard that there's nothing really controversial coming up, but we, you can never tell. You know. Well, you know, they, they, education is certainly going to be a big issue because the county executive in Arundel County has always talked about 13 small high schools. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Crofton High School certainly is something that has to be looked at. Old Mill is certainly bulging at the seams. So those type of things, education is going to be, I think, in the forefront of the county executive's uh, thinking. Uh, what we've done in our delegation is we're establishing this year a new committee within our delegation to handle transportation. That's going to be a big issue, I think, because they've been trying to get some kind of connectors between Baltimore, uh, the workforces here in Annapolis and, and Linthicum, Glen Burnie, Ferndale, all around. Yeah, because you know, look at Fort Meade, the airport with 22 million people going through it, uh, all of north of Grumman. You really need some connectors there. To and, get the, and not just roads, but transit. Right, yes, transit mass transit. Some yeah, form. yeah, mass transit of some kind. So I think they're big issues. And, of course, all this is going to rely on both the county executive and the governor's budget. Uh, but speaking of the governor's budget, I've heard that he is considering, or I think he announced, that there was going to be a $700 million investment in ter tearing down vacant buildings in Baltimore. Have you heard any chatter on this? No. Uh, when you dig a little bit deeper in that, it, it's, it's only about $100 million over several years that is being spent to tear down the buildings. The, the investment that's going, that would go back in to redevelopment of those properties actually comes from uh, housing and community development funds that already uh, exist but would be targeted uh, for that. So that's a, that's a big number, but it's projected over a number of years, and the bulk of it I think about $600 million comes out of revolving funds. Yeah. Delegate, how do your constituents feel about both this as well as other issues involved with Baltimore City? Are they upset that so much money goes there as opposed to Anne Arundel uh, County? I think it's because of what's just explained. They don't understand the concept, and it's difficult for me to go out and explain the concept that this is a new money a lot of time. It's money that's been allocated prior to this, and it's a continuation of what was guaranteed, or not guaranteed, given to them to revitalize that city. You know, as Baltimore goes, everyone says the rest of the county, the cities go. I happen to feel that, uh, you know, you've got to do what you can to protect the integrity of the Baltimore city and its student population and its workforce, but you have to do the same thing and do a reciprocal for the other counties. Well, we are off and running for another 90-day General Assembly session, and we'll be sure to keep you updated as the action continues. Thank you, Delegate Sophocles, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate and it. Len Lazarick, thank you for joining us as well. Good to be here. You can follow Len Lazarick on MarylandReporter.com or like his Facebook page. Thanks so much for joining us, folks.